zero dollars. And uh, high school league pays the insurance, reimburses me for gas, and it's just a great little little perk to drive around. And when people see the car in town, it's a big deal. And if the car can sign autographs, it, it would. <laughs> and uh, a lot of a lot of kids and teams and moms and dads like to take pictures with their kids or them selfies with the car. So it's a neat deal. Good, good for you yeah. and good for the MSHL. Uh, I, I always do that. I always stumble over, over MSHS. Mushizzle. Mushizzle. <laughs> I my kids, that my kids sometimes refer to me as not MSHSL John. That's my dad, my Shizzle John. So that's a, that's easy to say. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the next header for your next uh, segment here is "Lost on a Gravel Road." I, you know, I'm not a big country music fan, but I love Lucinda Williams and "Car Wheels on a Gravel Road." That's what popped into my I head. I could have used some Lucinda coming home yeah. from Wyndham, so I'm, I. I like to have somebody guiding me, so I'll use Google Maps on my phone. Sometimes I use Waze, which is a great app. And so I had I had Waze going. Coming home from Wyndham, come through Mankato, and then 169, and around Jordan, I take a sh- I get off county roads. I've been doing it for 20 years to get to where I live, in the, in the south side of the metro. I'd forgotten. There's a, I, I knew there was a road closed when I was up there in the spring and summer. That Darn it, you know, I've got to go around. So this time, oh, darn, there's, there's the sign the road's closed. Okay, Google Maps will take care of me. Or ways, whichever. I was using one of them. I, I, you know, I'm lost. And I'm on a gravel road with, with brush and trees. There's no, you know, there's no ditch. There's no, just, just like wide enough for a car and a half. Gravel road. It's 1130 at night. Pitch black. If, I w- if I'd have stopped, I'd have seen guys wearing hockey masks with chainsaws coming out of the woods. That's the kind of setting it was. So I, ha- I think I had Google Maps going, so then I, I boot- pulled over and booted up Waze. So I got Google Maps. I got this robotic female voice telling me what to do. On Waze, I've got a female voice with a British accent telling me what to do, and they're giving me different directions. So I somehow stumbled onto a paved road. And then, then saw a sign of a highway I recognized. And I made it home, but I was thinking, here we go again. And this happens to me more than it should. But I do drive all over the state. And, uh, you know, to t- they have these dueling voices, sometimes at the same time, you know, talking over each other. Turn right, turn left. <laughs> it reminds me, you know, I, I went and saw Springsteen on Broadway last year in New York. Oh, yeah. And he tells a story about how he packed his band this is like 1970, 71 in New Jersey. He packed his band in his hometown, and they took off in two vehicles just to drive across to California to play a couple of gigs. And he said, you know, young people are going to have to take a second to understand this. We lost each other. And in 1971, when he lost each other, that was it. Yeah, you were done. never going to see you're them done. again. You're you had no chance. There was no, no cell phone. There was no. no GPS. There was no way of locating each other. They didn't see each other until they got to California. And that's what happened, yeah. And I, uh, my kids have said to my wife, and I, what did you guys do before cell phones? Well, we had maps. You did? How's that work? You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a famous episode when, when our kids were little. My son, who's now a father, is in his mid-30s. He's maybe eight or nine years old. And we got the three kids in the minivan. I don't know where we're going. And I'm just totally lost. And this is nothing new for me. I'm a guy. I don't ask for directions. So we, we get to where we're going, or we get back on the road we're looking for, and my wife's breathing a sigh of relief, and I, I hear this little eight- or nine-year-old voice in the back seat going, nice job, Magellan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I was never prouder of him. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> Giving me the needle. <laughs> I mean, the key in the old days, and I don't, God, I know we're dating ourselves, but we've already dated ourselves. Yeah, so that's, that's the way it is. That ship has it's, Yeah, it's, it's nothing new. You actually need to have a flashlight or a good car battery so you had enough light to read the map when yeah. you were lost. Yeah. When we, or you would actually, and here's the weird, the really weird thing for young people. We used to actually go ask people yeah. directions. Pull over. Pull over. And I would like to make it sound like the good old days were better than they are now. They weren't because oh. about 85% of the time you got bad directions. They were worse because you talk to three different people, you get yes. three different sets of directions. What always used to shock me in the days before, <laughs> I know I'm going on too long about this, what used to shock me most as a traveling sports writer in the old days before GPS is how often you would ask somebody in the service industry, yes. somebody at the hotel desk, oh, yeah. who, and they would give you absolutely wrong directions. Right. Oh, yeah. And they should know. Absolutely. If anybody should know. Yeah. No, it's uh, cell phones. I think I think it was a good improvement. Uh, let's get a final thought from John and Jody. If you're still available, we'd love to have you come back up here for a second. If you're not, if I'm not interrupting. Uh, first, tell me about the uh, the pizza bowl paddle. 
that we just saw <laughs> unveiled here. The pizza paddle, the peel, the, the peel. It's, a, it's peel. a peel. That's what you call it in the in well, the industry. In the industry, we call <laughs> okay. it. Got it. A peel. It's a wooden pizza paddle. Um, Does peel was, mean because you use that to peel the pizzas out, off out of the right. oven? Off the, How the smart store. am I? And that's exactly the way we used to do it when we started doing it in 1983. We've we've graduated up to a more sophisticated level of doing it now. But <laughs> how do you do it now? Robots. Um, we actually put, <laughs> no, we actually put it on a screen and we just set it in ah, our hands. So okay. that's our sophisticated method. But yeah, the, we actually Malacca took um, the lead on creating the pizza peel, and we took the lead on creating the T-shirts for tonight. And Good. Princeton's T-shirts are pink, a very bright pink, as are my new delivery drivers mm-hmm. for you two. Um, <laughs> And the reason that they're pink is because tonight is also Tackle Cancer, the Tackle Cancer game here in Princeton, yep. and uh, that's a fundraising effort for the Randy Shaver um, Cancer Foundation. Oh, cool. So, and Randy has done so much yes. for so many years. It's great. It's fantastic. Yes. And I believe he's at the Tech Apollo yeah, he's game up tonight. Yeah, St. Cloud tonight. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. and uh, the new Super. stadium up there for yep. St. Cloud Tech. Yep. So maybe one of these years we can get him to join us here in the Tackle Cancer Night, and it might co- uh, coincide with Pizza Bowl again, but... Okay. Um, I, you know, I have to thank Brian Julson from Malacca High School. He's the athletic director up there. He took the pizza peel from me, and he created the design on it, and they got it engraved, and he just delivered it five minutes ago. We it's, saw that happen. Yep, and you and had not seen it. Right? I hadn't seen oh, it yet, no. When perfect. I gave it to him, it was just a plain piece yeah. of wood. <laughs> so they took care of that for us. So, um, Fantastic. Just a lot of fun things going on tonight. We have the pizza peel to give away and the T-shirt sales. There's pizza at the concessions. Um, there's items being sold by the Booster Club for Tackle Cancer Night to raise money for Tackle can- uh, Cancer. And then at halftime, the Princeton cheerleaders will be passing around buckets for donations for Tackle Cancer Night. So, Excellent. Um, one thing after another. We'll, we'll stay busy the whole night. Yeah. What are you going to do tomorrow? Rest. <laughs> <laughs> Good. You've earned it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's get a final thought from John and say our final goodbyes and thank yous to Jody. What is your final thought as we um, start up a new season you know, of uh, that's prep coverage? It. That's it, Jim. It's a new season. Uh, best time of the year for me in this business to start up again. I get kind of bored sitting around in the summer, although having a new grandson uh, certainly made that even better. Um, but, yeah, it's a great time of year to get out. Like I said, this will be my fourth football game of the year. I've been to soccer and volleyball and in cross country already, there's tons going on, so go go see an event at your local school, and you'll have a great time. Well, thanks again to Jody Stay. Thanks to Pizza Barn here in Princeton. Thanks to Richard Mueller of, uh, of Heggie's Pizza. Uh, we appreciate everybody who listens to this show and the network in general. Jody, thanks so much for having us here. Let's eat some pizza. Yeah, thanks, Jody.